I decided to write Peace Moth because before my son was killed, I didn't do any kind of activism. I didn't believe that one person could make a difference. I disagreed with the war. I saw millions of people all over the world in February of 2003 protesting against the war. I didn't think that my voice or my presence would be valid or relevant to anything, so I didn't do anything. And after Casey was killed, I really regretted it. So I decided one day shortly after he was killed that if I couldn't make a difference, that at least I was going to die trying to make a difference. And I just want to inspire people to go out of their comfort zone to try and make a difference, to try to make the world a better place. My daughter Carly inspired me to be an activist because she wrote a poem shortly after Casey was killed. We had been getting a lot of cards and letters and people had written poems about how it was wonderful that Casey died for our freedom to keep us safe. And as a family, we didn't believe that. Casey didn't believe that. I knew that if he was killed in Iraq, he would have been killed for no reason, for lies and for deception. So I was reading one of the poems. I was grateful that America was reaching out to us, but the poems kind of upset me. And Carly came and she said, Mom, do you want to hear a poem that I wrote? And I said, well, of course, sweetie. And she recited it to me. It's in my book. And it really was the inspiration for me to get off of my couch and quit feeling sorry for myself. Like all of our young people who have been killed in this war, he was brave, but he was brave his whole life. He was always filled with uncompromising integrity. If he thought something was right, he would do it. If he thought it was wrong, he wouldn't do it, no matter what people thought. For example, one day he had worked hard on a paper all weekend, and it was due on Monday. It was a project when he was in high school. One of his fellow students offered him $100 to put his name on the project also because he hadn't done it, in case he refused because he said that would be cheating. He was funny. He was so sweet. He loved his brother and sisters. We, as a family, have always loved animals. We loved our animals. He wanted to be a deacon in the Catholic Church. He wanted to be an elementary school teacher. And he wanted to get married and have a family. His passing just has left a huge hole in our family. I think Casey would be very proud of my decision to fight for peace because he didn't want to go to Iraq. He told everybody before he went that he couldn't kill innocent people. He didn't believe in the war. He didn't believe in George Bush. He thought George Bush was misusing him and his buddies. No matter what people think about war and violence on this side, on this plane, when they cross over, they know that peace is the answer, that nonviolence is the answer to everything. So I know even if he didn't agree with me, he would be proud of me because we always stand up for what we believe in. I really don't know why I've become a lightning rod in the media. I did something really simple last summer. I went down to Crawford, Texas to confront George Bush. When he wouldn't meet with me, I sat in a ditch, and everything that has ensued since then has just kind of happened. Camp Casey happened organically. We didn't plan anything. We didn't even take anything with us. The first night, we just had lawn chairs and a bucket to go to the restroom in. So I really don't know why it's happened, except I think last summer America was ready for this. America was sick and tired of George Bush and his policies. And I think I went down at the exact right time. And whatever happened after that, it's really inexplicable to me. But I'm just doing the same thing I did before Camp Casey, just working for peace. I'm not very hopeful about meeting with George Bush at this time. I would say to him, though, the same thing that I wanted to ask him last summer, what noble cause? What noble cause did you kill my son for? What noble cause did you kill the rest of our brave young people for? What noble cause are the people of Iraq in harm's way? Why is this nightmare still continuing? I find the strength and the energy from the millions of people that are still in harm's way. I find my strength and energy to fight for peace. It's a struggle on a daily basis, but I can't let myself relax. I can't let myself 
give up because our children are in harm's way, the innocent people of Iraq are in harm's way, and that's where I get my strength from trying to save lives. I think that you have to do what I did. I didn't do anything before Casey was killed because I was comfortable in my materialistic American way where as long as something doesn't affect us, we pretty much just go about our daily lives. But I want to convince everybody in America that this war is harming each and every one of them. It's harming their children, their grandchildren, their unborn children and grandchildren. George Bush is making enemies faster than he can kill them. They're going to hate our country for generations. And besides our children and our grandchildren, and who knows how many generations are going to be paying for this war. We're spending $10 million an hour on this war, and it's just taking money away from our communities and our families, our schools, and it's just everybody is affected, and everybody needs to get out of their complacency to try and do something about it. Well, the newly classified documents from the Central Intelligence Agency, the National Intelligence Estimate, that was released in April says that George Bush's war in Iraq, the occupation of Iraq, is um, increasing Islamic jihadism. And I just really want to know how much they spent on that report because anybody who thinks could tell that that's what was happening. Last week was the worst week for attacks ever in Iraq. And the insurgency is on the rise. And these are people who never thought of being our enemies. But when you see your mother raped or your father killed or your brother killed or imprisoned and tortured, how can you help but hate us? Violence and killing and hatred always begets more violence, killing, and hatred. And we have to work to solve these problems without doing it. Even if we're attacked, we have to look and see what did we do? How can we make this better? How can we make it right? Go after the people who attacked us and punish them, punishing innocent countries that had nothing to do with the attack on our soil is just making things worse, not better. About the poll numbers, about numbers of Americans who disagree with the war and disagree with George Bush going up, it won't do me any good to be upset about what happened in 2003 because even though I disagree with the war, I wasn't using my disagreement or my power to do anything about it. I read today that like 61% of the people disagree with the war and want the troops to come home, where it's 75% of the people in Iraq want the troops to leave now. But I just wonder, where are these people who still think that this war is a good thing and think that what we're doing in Iraq is a positive activity for the United States of America. And with 60 to 65 percent of the people opposing this war, where are they all? They need to get out in the streets. We need to show, not just in an obscure poll number, but we need to show this administration that we mean business when we say we want our troops home.